this is Matt Kahn and I'm Jeff Butler. We're law partners at the law firm of Butler Kahn. We want to talk today about a truck wreck case that we recently resolved for $1,050,000. Uh, Matt's going to walk us through the facts of the case. Sure. So like Jeb said, this was a truck wreck that happened in Gwinnett County, which is uh, northeast of Atlanta. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom in to where the wreck happened. So our client was driving east on Brooks Road, uh, and there was a box truck that was parked at Brooks Point Drive, which is a neighborhood intersection. Um, and the truck was just kind of sitting there, figuring out which way it was going to go, uh, when it suddenly darted out into the intersection. And our client hit the middle of the truck as it was turning out of the intersection, making a left-hand turn. Um, and we, the speed of the collision was pretty high. You can see the entire front end uh, of the vehicle was totally crushed. Uh, and our client suffered some pretty serious injuries from this. The, the impact of the collision broke her knee pretty badly uh, and required an emergency surgery, uh, which was followed up with a total knee replacement once she recovered from that first emergency surgery. One of the things we do in any case like this where liability is disputed is try to figure out what happened out there on the scene of the collision. And here, liability was disputed. The truck company said, no, 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 this isn't our fault. You know, it, they blamed our, our client for driving too fast, which had something to it. We'll talk about that later. Uh, they blamed the county for, for um, designing the intersection wrong and a bunch of other stuff that really didn't carry much water. So we had to figure out what happened out there. Now, a good way to start is with witnesses. We go through all kinds of electronic and more modern evidence in just about every case, but still, in terms of proving what happened, you cannot beat an eyewitness. So we went out and found someone who was there on the scene of the collision. If we go back uh, to that map, the truck was here on Brooks Point Drive and taking a left, as Matt said. We found a driver who was right behind him the whole time, who, who um, actually lived in the neighborhood, so we went out there and met um, with that witness and, and talked with him to get what he recalled. <clears throat> and what he recalled was great for our case. He remembered being there behind the truck and watching as the truck sat there for a long period of time as though the truck driver didn't really know where he or she was going, which makes sense because it was a box truck out making probably residential delivery. So it was probably looking on his phone or something else to figure out where to go, but sat there for a long time and then just darted out in the trap. So once we get helpful testimony like that, one of the things we'll often do is reduce it to writing, to a signed, sworn under oath statement that's called an affidavit. And that's what this is on the screen behind us. We walk through a lot of details that we don't need to go through now, um, but the important part is right here. Our witness says, when the truck finally did pull out, he pulled right in front of the silver car, which is what our client was driving, who didn't have a chance to stop. In other words, the driver of the truck was at fault. That's obviously a big deal in the context of a case like this. In addition to seeing witnesses, or, or what you sometimes call lay witnesses, will um, enlist the help of expert witnesses. So here, that involves something you've probably heard of called an accident reconstruction. An expert who can look at tire marks and damage to vehicles and black box downloads and figure out what happened out there. So we did that. We retained um, an accident reconstruction that we work with a lot who went out there, flew his drone, got some good photos, and was working up diagrams to use at trial. Um, here we had to make the case that the truck driver should have known not to pull out and that our uh, client didn't have a chance to stop. And that can involve some kind of tricky testimony because you have to talk about perception reaction time, visual stimuli, and all these other things that we don't normally think about in day-to-day -day conversations. So we retained a human factors expert who rendered the opinion um, that it wasn't our client's fault, that she couldn't have avoided this collision. And he did some cool things. You know, one of them was he went out there and did um, what I think anyone would do, really, and drove the scene of the collision. So this is how it looked. Yeah, from our client's perspective, um, as she's approaching the intersection. So the intersection where the collision occurred is coming up right here, and the truck just pulls out right in front of her, right th about there. 
is where the collision happened. So once you've done um, all that witness work, the case starts to look um, a lot better, but the defense still had a few tricks they wanted to try to pull, like the insurance company try to get out of the case. Sure. So something unique uh, about a case involving a truck is that you have the ability to directly name the insurance company, which you typically can't do uh, when you're dealing with two, two private parties who are involved in a car accident. And so when we filed the case, we named the driver, the truck company, and its commercial insurer. Uh, and so we were hit with a motion to dismiss, which is basically where a defendant just asked the court to throw uh, the lawsuit out, um, claiming that they were not a motor carrier or you know a trucking company. And so we looked at the language of the statute, which says that uh, any vehicle that weighs over, I forget, is it 10,000 pounds? 10,001 pounds. Okay, 10,001, any vehicle that weighs over 10,001 pounds is a commercial motor vehicle. And so we, we uh, made that argument and, and the court agreed with us. So we got an order denying the motion to dismiss and we'll go ahead to the important part of the order. Right here, the court found that uh, BO, the, the defendant trucking company, was a motor carrier under Georgia law, and therefore it was proper for us to name them, which is a big deal when you're asking a jury to award money. Uh, you know, a jury is more likely to award money when you're asking for it against a big insurance company versus a, you know, a small business or an individual. Um, we had some problems with the case, some things that worried Matt and I. Um, you know, I think I mentioned black box downloads um, earlier, the, the downloads from the sort of electronic control module or ECM of a vehicle can tell you a lot about steering inputs, speeds, and braking. Um, and it turned out that our client, her conduct wasn't perfect. She was going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. Um, was it 55 out of 45? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's how people drive in the Atlanta area all the time. If you ain't going 10 over, you're getting run right over. But um, she was, and so that created some problems for us. We were afraid that some jurors might not like to hear that if we were to take the case to trial. So we conducted some focus groups where we actually will do it a lot of times in this room, but we'll, we'll get people together either in this room where we are now, our conference room, or online virtually, and ask you know, a selection of 10 or 12 random folks, what they think about various facts. And sometimes the focus group would say, oh, we don't care about the speeding. We think the truck is at fault. And other focus groups would say, oh no, if your client's speeding, I don't, I don't think y'all should win. So, you know, we had some concerns. We'd done, we think, a really good workup on the case, but it wasn't, it wasn't the purest, cleanest mm -hmm. liability case in the world. So we came up with a strategy to, to address that. Yeah. So uh, in Georgia, we have a, a statute that most states do. It's uh, called Rule 68, and, and it basically gives us a tool to make an offer of settlement to a defendant. And if we're, if the defendant doesn't accept that, and we go to trial and beat the offer by a certain amount, then they have to pay the attorney's fees for our client. Uh, and so it can be a really persuasive tool to get the insurance company and the defendants to sit down and realistically evaluate, uh, evaluate the case, assess the value of the damages. Uh, and so we got together, we spent a bunch of time, probably you know, several days, talking about a number that you, you know, would provide fair compensation to our client, but would be something that we think that we would stand a chance of beating at trial. Uh, and so what we did is put together a Rule 68 offer for $1,050,000 uh, and sent it to the trucking company and its insurer. And, and this uh, offer in particular required the defendants and the insurance company to have a judgment entered against them, which typically insurance companies won't do. Uh, so it can make, a, make it a more appealing tool for a plaintiff. Uh, but in this case, they, they took the 30 days that they have to either accept or reject the offer and asked us a bunch of questions that were very close to uh, counter offers, but not quite. Uh, and on the 30th day, they let us know that they were accepting the offer and uh, the case was settled. 